No, no, he's recording, I think. Um, I've been involved in uh, with XMPP since about 2001, uh, and my involvement's grown over the years. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, the social web use case, or a social web use case, based on my experience uh, with Seismic. However, uh, a little disclaimer, uh, what I'm talking about is not necessarily what Seismic has or will do. It's just uh, kind of my own thoughts on an ideal use case. So we talked already about the uh, PubSub basics, but well, that was magic. So basically, <laughs> stay. Oh, it's doing a, yeah, don't do that. So basically, uh, each node is a push feed. Uh, and you can configure each node and configure your subscriptions. There are tons and tons of options for uh, in the spec for the nodes. You don't need to care about any more than you want to. So I mean, it just implement what you feel like from the spec. Uh, user feeds. Uh, we organize our feeds uh, in such a way that uh, we don't get huge lists, so we break it up alphabetically. Uh, or you can just disable discovery on nodes uh, so that you don't kill your XMPP server. Um, we use an inbox for each user, an outbox, and an outbox pub public. So um, you when you are following somebody, you're subscribed to their outbox pub public. And when you get replies or direct messages, it goes into your inbox, which you're subscribed to. Uh, there, we had two interesting challenges. Um, that is, uh, when a user was logged in multiple times, uh, and we didn't want uh, messages to be delivered when they were offline. So um, we found something in the spec that kind of takes care of both these problems, presence-based delivery. So we send, uh, our web client sends direct presence to the component, or if it's just a normal client, you could add the component to your roster, the pub sub component. Um, and so then the pub sub component is aware of your presence and it will send messages to uh, all of your available resources that it sees online. And when it doesn't see you online, it won't send messages at all. Um, a more recent problem, uh, temporary subscriptions, and we hashed this out a little bit at FOSDEM at the XMPP summit in Brussels. Um, and what I proposed is that we use PubSub Expire, which is a subscription option, uh, which allows you to say, unsubscribe me at this timestamp. Well, instead of putting a timestamp there, we put the word presence. So if it, the component does not see your presence um, when you do that, then it will reject, reject the subscription and uh, otherwise accept it. And then as soon as you go offline, you're unsubscribed. So the use case for this is like if you're on a forum and you're watching a particular thread, when you go to that thread, you, uh, your client subscribes temporarily to that view. So as long as your web client is on that thread view, uh, it pushes updates to it. And then when you browse away, your client unsubscribes. Well, what if you just close your client? So it goes offline. You don't care about it anymore. Uh, and it unsubscribes you. Uh, alternatively, the reason it's nice as a, a subscription option is because you can um, just subscribe to it directly without an expire if you're interested in this thread permanently. Um, Filter feeds are basically uh, dynamically created nodes based upon a search that you've done. So Seismic uh, pushes videos. And within our videos, within our video events, we have uh, the user it was pushed, the thread it was pushed to, some description text, so on and so forth. So you might create a filter based off these fields. And the service could then dynamically create a node for you 
that you subscribe to. Uh, and it behaves a lot like track. And um, Seth already talked about OAuth and PubSub. I thought I'd give another example. And that is of a user really controlling their own data. Um, a user, for example, on LinkedIn might want to import their Gmail contacts. Well, say it's done with OAuth so that you're giving permission. Um, it's a one-time thing. Your contacts are imported, and that's the end of it. Well, with PubSub, you could use that token and use it, and that token is then authorized to subscribe to their contacts. So then I, uh, LinkedIn goes out and subscribes to your Gmail contacts, say it's a PubSub node somewhere, and then maybe that token expires, but they're still subscribed. So they get updates on your contacts until you unsubscribe them. Every time you change, add, remove a contact, it would then be pushed to LinkedIn. A little bit about views. Um, we have uh, Bosch clients for the website. You have third-party clients. You have IM clients. Um, you have your own desktop clients. They can all benefit from the same eventing system using the same scheme. They're all going to be interested in the same kinds of things. So if you already have followers and you're already following other people, there's no reason not to use the same user account uh, with third-party clients. Uh, IM notifications. If your payload is uh, XML, which it should be, the XSLT, uh, you can just use XSLT to, to convert your payload into a message. Uh, so it's like a free feature. It, it's, it's, you suddenly get IM notifications for your service just because they're logged in. You could have an external XMPP account like a Google Talk account or a, or a LiveJournal account and uh, you might put it in your profile and then it would subscribe to you, that JID the same it subscribes to the local JID, and just mirrors it. Um, once you have PubSub and XMPP and you're setting events, why not take advantage of the fact that you've implemented XMPP on your website and your clients? This is social software after all. So you have presence, you have friends, you have IM, you have, take advantage of it, it's there. Uh, some gotchas that we ran into, um, most PubSub servers are very incomplete. Uh, so if you want to take advantage of every service out there, you're probably going to have to do it yourself uh, or contract somebody to do it. Scaling millions of users and nodes is hard, but it's doable. Um, to be specific, uh, Java lib called Smack uh, dealt with PubSub payloads very poorly. So it's very hard for us to support uh, third-party uh, subscribers that use that because it looks to them like we're not sending them all the information. So we've had to uh, hold hands with some people on that. Um, along with support, why support third-party servers? If you're sending out masses of information, Google Talk is not going to put up with that. Jabber.org is not going to put up with that. So. If somebody wants to subscribe to their, your Firehose, just give them a local user. It simplifies things quite a bit. Um, the spec has been around for quite a while, uh, but uh, only recently have people started using it this way. Um, in a non, using XMPP in a non-IM context is kind of a new idea. So uh, it's cool. It's bleeding edge. Any questions? <laughs>